Welcome to Tactical Reviews for a look at a interesting and innovative sharpening system from Hall. The design is in fact goes back to uh, 1993 as indicated in the logo of the of the brand Hall. Uh, this particular model is the Hall 2 and as well as the main sharpening system I've got a couple of accessories, a storage station uh, and the premium sharpening kit and uh, we'll see how those integrate with the main sharpener but let's have a closer look at this interesting sharpening system which you can see just looks like a, a roller see here how it's presented so we've got a quick start guide and then a multi-language information book and then the main components are what we saw in the picture on the front which is a rolling sharpening unit and we'll take a closer look at that in a moment and a guide block which has two ends with different angles so we've got 15 degrees and might not be so visible in the light here but 20 degrees with the dark coloring and effectively that is our sharpening system an angle guide block and a rolling sharpener. So let's zoom in and have a closer look at those. Okay, so now we're zoomed in just to take a closer look. With the simpler of the, the two parts to this sharpening system, a wooden block with rubberized ends which are magnetic so they're going to hold the knife blade at one of two different angles that are offered little rubber feet just to keep it steady and what we find here is we bring a knife it's held very securely against the end of the block So that's our guide block and then we have the main rolling sharpener. So this has got the central sector, your grip section just is a spinning cylinder and that is what you're actually going to hold during sharpening and then we have two rubber wheels I suppose is the best way that they, they, they roll over your working surface and obviously those are rotating while you hold the grip so just like wheels and here each end we have, so this end we have a diamond grit sharpening surface and on the other end we have a ceramic sharpener. These are removable, replaceable, swappable. If you hold the rubber, doesn't matter which end, you can then unscrew the actual sharpening disc. So this is the wheel that rotates with a threaded center. One of different 
options of the sharpening disc which then just screw in and making sure if you hold hold the wooden bit you're never going to be able to tighten it but hold the rubber wheel and you can tighten that up so again the diamond one also removable so with those two main components let's also just bring in the sharpening station while we're looking closer up so this is a very very nicely finished and made stand for those two sharpening components so in this case it's the matching wood you could go for a different one for a contrast finish if you wanted you'll notice that there are a couple of metal bolt heads and what that means is when you pop in the guide block with its magnetic ends it is held in place neatly and then we have an angled little well cut out here into which this sharpening roller just sits so a helps if I don't drop it <laughs> so if you're sitting this in your kitchen surface ready to touch up your kitchen knives whenever just a very nicely presented little sharpening stand for the sharpener's two main components. Now what we do have is uh, extra kits for expanding the, uh, the, the options. So I'm going to zoom back out, have a look at the premium sharpening kit and then we'll take a look at actual sharpening. And so here we have the premium sharpening kit. So effectively this is this three add-ons so tucked at the back of the box is a nice leather strop strip uh, very nice quality thick leather which is really important uh, when it comes to finishing off once you've done some sharpening you you'll always have uh, bits of metal uh, shavings left on the on the knife edge and possibly uh, you know uh, traces of a burr and with the strop you just clean that off and get the best possible result then we also have two additional sharpening discs of different grit so we have a 3000 fine stone and a 6000 extra fine and these are provided to you in nice metal tins and wrapped in a, a cloth inside the tin we have the stone with a marking telling you this is the 3000 grit the 3000 is a blue colour and the 6000 extra fine again marked on the back And then what you are going to do is deciding so perhaps the the diamond now that you've got your knives uh, sharp you're just doing regular touch-ups you've actually decided you just want fine stones to touch the edge regularly 
so we can dispense with the diamond until we need it again and pop in an extra fine sharpening disc tighten that up and there we've gone to the extra fine stone So that's the premium sharpening kit and what I'm going to do in the next section is start work on a knife that needs some touching up with this new system to see how it, how it works. So for this part of the video of actually using the hall sharpening system what I'm going to do is start by working on a, a kitchen knife which is what the system is designed for that's the majority of the users this is aimed at will be for uh, those wanting to sharpen kitchen knives which obviously are very thin profile flat grind typically to a very fine angle but what I also want to do is to work on uh, something more like a, a traditional sort of hunting knife which is quite different uh, in geometry uh, here with a sabre grind, thicker spine and perhaps not quite so easy to access with the system so when trying to work on a knife with a different blade geometry for example where the end of the cutting edge is not so easily accessible as it is on a kitchen knife uh, we're just going to see how the system works with a knife like that so what I want to do this knife uh, I believe when I set the edge angle previously I would have set it to about 15 degrees per side so that will fit nicely with one of the two options provided uh, 20 degrees per side is more of your sort of normal edge angle for a utility knife rather than kitchen knife you tend to go with the finer angle for kitchen knife um, but what I'm going to do is use that sort of little trick with this first time this is literally the first time I'm using this beyond a quick demo uh, where I was able to actually use it at a show but what I'm going to do is put marker on the edge bevel and then just see how that's removed by the sharpening system uh, and the angle that I choose there so just gonna quickly run marker over both sides of the edge bevel as you might do when hand sharpening or using another system and you just want to check your edge angle so at the moment we've got blackened edge bevel both sides so the strop we'll come back to that when we need to and the stages that we have with using the sharpener here is that we're going to mount it so the intention with this system is that you go with your handedness so being right handed I would more naturally hold the stone you can see the powerful magnets grab the knife let's just move that to one side so for applying the stone to the edge you would tend to go with your handed hand so my right hand and I will use that to move the stone so what that means is that for one edge I have the handle towards me and for the other edge I have the handle away from me because what I'm swapping round is I'm not changing hands I'm 
changing the direction the knife is sitting against the guide block which I then hold steady with my uh, my non-handed hand. So we're going with 15 degrees marked edge and not being completely familiar with the condition of this knife apart from the fact it's ready for a, a sharpen I'm going to start with the the diamond and just see what the finish and look on that edge is like. So mount the knife bring the stone towards it so obviously I'm not here actually yet in contact with the knife edge which you can see is held at the required angle and as I because it because there's some compliance with the rubber wheels as I bring it towards the knife I'm simply rolling backwards and forwards and pushing towards the knife and that uh, that does move from here I'm starting further away and with just moving it backwards and forwards I'm coming in contact with the knife edge so have a little look at the black marker so in fact I'm going to zoom in so we can have a close look at that so this is the side I've done the first few passes and what I haven't done is either I'm far enough back to actually start sharpening the heel of the edge and I think not quite far enough forward also what happens is as the stone is moving forwards there is a slight curving for the tip of the blade and I may need to work that section separately so those first few passes have shown that I am missing the tip and the heel but the rest looks like I'm getting contact and I am on the right angle actually no. so I think the original edge is perhaps wider than 15 degrees because I have got a bit of black right at the very edge so I'm going to use this opportunity to work this to a 15 degrees so I'm going to zoom back out and carry on work on this edge Okay, and back to see if I can get the heel. So, the type of thing that occurs to me, better stop that because that's quite noisy in my studio setup here, is that as I come to the heel, so this diamond stone, the diamonds are all round the side, and if I were particular about not marking the handle, I uh, probably would want to put a wrap of masking tape because very easily I'm going to come a little bit too far 
In fact, I might pause the video and do that just now. So, back in a minute. Okay, so just as I mentioned, to avoid marking the handle, I'm just gonna do a little bit of masking tape. Especially if you had uh, an expensive custom knife that you really didn't want to mar the handle. So let's just get back to that now. now so. and it's very obvious there's a lot of I see these blades in a kitchen you often put on magnetic holders so I've got a hairy edge with the uh, the metal filings stuck to the edge so I don't have such a clear view of whether I've got a burr yet and if I have gone all the way but I think I am there or at least close enough I'm going to work a little bit more at the front and then I'm going to swap around. Now that has actually been very quick. So, a bit more. And this action is very easy and quick and I'm moving very quickly but in a very controlled way. If I just reposition slightly so you can see the tip of the blade. So with the amount of pressure that I'm applying, you'll actually see the blade flex, but it's held perfectly securely by the magnetic guide block. detach, fit it the other way around and now work the opposite side which is currently fully marker penned over the cutting edge. So it does look like I've got a bit more reprofiling at the heel and at the tip. Let's keep going.
So I'm working quite, oh, look at that. Magnetic holders in the guide block, capturing some of the filings. So I'm being quite uh, brave in, well, in terms of, I know I've got a bit of reprofiling. I know these are quite coarse diamond. So I'm just going for it because I just want to get to that point. I can start looking at a finer grit. A little bit more work at the, work at the tip and a bit more at the heel. So of course something to mention here is that the action of the stone, I'm not simply, if I pick this up off the table and move it along the edge. So that is not what's actually happening. As you move, the stone is rotating as it goes along the edge. So you're doing this. So you do get a combined upward and downward, so off and on the edge motion, as well as some along, along the edge, but you do get a combination of grit moving. Uh, the direction of the grit is sort of constantly changing. So I think it's time to pop back and work the other side, but let's just examine. I'm gonna zoom in and you see the nice furry edge with all of the, the filings on it. And where the guide block was holding it. So obviously what will happen here, when I turn it round, I'm gonna start transferring, in fact, there's even some already, some of the filings on the end of the guide block. Now, quite often I find I'll pick that up with, with tape, so I'll use a bit of masking tape to try and lift that. See the filings coming off. So we'll keep working the edge. Let's just zoom back out. see the a lot of filings here what I don't want to do is load the strop up with all of this the strop will help remove little bits of of burr but I don't want to just fill it with all these filings that's a personal choice, you can do what you like. Okay, I'm just examining the edge and it's looking good. And this is just with the coarse 
diamond. So we'll things connected a bit. going to swap away from the diamond and use the standard ceramic stone that it comes with. Obviously I have to keep stopping when we're going to mention these things. Something that you'll find with any sharpening system is that when you buy it the diamonds are as sharp as they're going to be the ceramic grit is as rough as it's going to be and in fact usually with a sharpening system you need to use it a bit before you actually get the best results so it's a bit of wearing in um, so this very first out-of-the-box sharpen uh, I would expect to then improve over time also be able to see is despite that what appears to be almost sliding it along the edge this stone is showing it's starting to show a bit of color from wearing against the steel across the entire surface actually so you can see how the stone is rotating across that edge evidence of a lot of fine filings and dust appearing on the edge. Certainly I think I'll just get ready to swap over a little bit more. be careful with your fresh edge flipping this round the snap of the magnet holder and your upright exposed edge so do be careful do beware first use dirtying the stone up nicely all over so where normally I might be looking for a burr, looking for the condition of the edge. Because we have a magnetic system, the blade is charged magnetically and obviously is retaining all the filings. So it's obscuring any possible visibility for, um, you know, a burr, 
otherwise the condition of the edge where you may be looking for the light playing across it so to a degree here we have to have a bit of faith and trust that we've worked it sufficiently also in repeated use we are keeping the angle the same so we definitely improving the edge following that same angle so I'm going to tidy this up a bit with a bit more masking tape to grab filings again my preference just because I don't want to unnecessarily load up the, the strop but we are going to run it over that strop You can see again the colour. This has come from this finer grit. And obviously, be careful around the edge. I may look a little bit cavalier doing this but I am being very careful, cautious and aware of our freshly sharpened edge. So time for a quick strop. So you don't get an angle guide for the stropping. We are, however, not using any form of cutting compound on the strop, just the leather to pick up the filings and work off any burr. Also, it's a little bit awkward working in my studio here. So, cleaned up at edge. Sorry about that noise, a little bit of testing paper. And let's see how we've done. Paper testing is not definitive, but it gives you an indication. So. And dare I try on camera a bit of shaving. So not shaving sharp off that first attempt. That's certainly perhaps a bit small to catch there. sharp probably a micro serration but just not not taking the hair off back of my hand so 
So what I'm going to do is load up the finer grit wheels, continue to work this edge in the next section. So I've now loaded up the hull two with the two finer grits and we're going to continue working this edge. So the blue one is the 3000, the white is the 6000. really should be enough. Again, a bit of filings to remove the magnetic holder, kind of grabbing them. onto the finest grit. The last time you see this pristine white Now this time I'm going to not use my method for picking up filings and just go straight onto the strop. Quite a difference you can see. This we can clean up with uh, an eraser. We should be able to. So you don't need to worry too much. Thank you. 
let's go straight for that test So, a few hairs popped. Let's give it a little bit more strop. stones producing definitely a finer edge and this was started from a complete grind reprofile as the edge wasn't quite 15 degrees per side and I can definitely I can see in the reflection the finer stones have refined that edge it is a definitely a better finish so that's the first run through with the hall 2 and a kitchen knife so as I said earlier we started off working on a kitchen knife for which the system is really designed however we're going to try now to work on more of an outdoor type knife and see how we get on there. For this blade I'm going to assume a slightly wider edge angle and use the 20 degrees per side on the block. I am also going to mark the edge and just check our edge bevel angle. As I suspect a bit of a reprofile, we're going to start with a diamond. Just looking at how these fit together. So as I reach the heel, I have quite a high likelihood of hitting the plunge. So I'm going to tape up a little bit. I don't like unnecessarily marring any part of a knife. So I'm going to pop a bit of masking tape. First of all, protecting the plunge. That may have covered enough of the guard, not to worry. Let's see. Nope. A little bit more. Just to keep the guard safe.
you may or may not choose to do something similar. So there's the knife on the 20 degree angle. So here with the shape of the get my hand out of the way, shape of the blade curving significantly more than with a with a kitchen knife I was working. I'm quite a long way from hitting the edge on the tip. That first pass suggests that actually I'm not quite 20 degrees, I'm probably more like 18 per side, but I don't want to go to 15 for this knife. So with those two options, 20 degrees is the angle I would go for. So it'll need a... on this part which means I don't get to move that much then for the tip completely untouched really let's see so I have to curve quite a way around am I hitting it and I am hitting it but not quite to the tip so a bit more now also something to be said here in terms of geometry with the edge curving up towards the spine actually at the point that, uh, that you get to the tip in effect, this stone should actually be at the edge sharpening angle. So in this case, 20 degrees. 20 degrees because the edge is curved all the way around. So if you don't take the stone that far around, you're never going to sharpen the tip. And I've just, just started to get there. And that's because as I've come forward, I've had to go to that type of angle. So there's no guide for that. This is by eye and the fact that I've got the marker on there. So that is quite a difference. And typically, when sharpening, the center is the easiest pass to get, the heel and the tip the hardest to get sharp. And you can kind of see actually why. Center, nice and easy. Heel, a little bit awkward. The tip, well, unless I get that stone to the right angle, I'm not even working it. So I'm actually going to have to support the handle. It's lifting. And check. So I have now removed all of the marker on the tip. because I'm going to a slightly wider angle I've not removed the marker all the way back on this go but because I'm actually working the cutting edge that doesn't matter it'll pick up in future sharpenings So, I'm going to swap.
swap round. Again, I'm going to have to support the handle because when I work the tip, it's lifting it. In fact, this way round, it's easier for me to see the angle on the tip and work it better. So I can feel real grind like this. of my masking tape protection there so I've been bumping that quite a bit. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so here we have an uneven edge bevel. As on this side, I have still got black marker to the edge, so there is more work to do. Really need to clean that edge so I can see. like a little bit more work. actually doing, especially when working a very small area, if I just literally back and forward the scratch pattern from this, the grit, it's the same uh, peaks and troughs in the stone going over that area, 
If you allow a little bit of extra rotation, then reset, you get a slightly different scratch pattern. traces of marker for any uneven well from the original bevel So the edges of the sharpening stone are working into the corner of the plunge. If you had a straight stone, you might avoid that. for a bit of finer grit just gonna tap off you can see the filings stuck here
Okay, now with the grooves in this stone, as I follow the curve of the blade tip, as I bring it back round, I'm actually getting the groove knocking on the edge, which is going to undo some of our work. So this is where actually the flat stone in the premium sharpening kit, uh, I'm going to swap to that now. So that grooved stone is giving me issues at the blade tip. So my white surface shows quite a lot of filing residue, which whichever surface you choose to work on, uh, you're going to have. So I'm not going to go to the extra fine right now, we'll just stay with the fine. Remember this has been a reprofile job as well. It may not be a perfect result first time. so because it's not a kitchen knife the handles hit the surface so I'm just going to sit it on top of the sharpening block slightly shorter stroke magnetic part of the system means a lot of mess over the blade lots of filings stuck to it so this knife which isn't ever put on a magnetic holder we've got sort of magnetic residue holding on to the filings clean up
I suspect I may not actually have gone far enough. Oh, well, okay, shaves. So perhaps I did then. Let's try a little bit of this. can say success. So there we are with the hall two. And remember, get informed, be prepared, stay sharp.